Welcome back to part two of this series on tearing down, inspecting, and rebuilding a Honda 200cc air-cooled engine. This one came out of a 1983 Honda Big Red 200E. This is also used in many other of the Honda ATCs, the four tracks, and other Honda applications, so this video could be useful for a lot of different things. Now, the first video, you might want to go back and watch that. We pulled the camshaft out of the side here, and today, on this video, we're just going to remove the cylinder head cover. And each of these videos is going to be covering one aspect of this process so that we can finish one aspect, inspect it, and be done with that before moving on. So the cover is going to come off here. And what that is going to allow us to do is get access to the rocker arms and inspect those before we go on to pulling the rest of the head. So let's dig in. Now, looking for the top of the engine, what we're going to be removing right now are the four uh, acorn nuts here and the socket head cap screws. And when we get all these off, it's gonna allow us to take the cylinder head cover right off and get access inside. I used a five millimeter Allen head to get these off. And now I'm gonna be using a 12 millimeter deep socket to get the acorn nuts off. And what I would do with these is kind of just break them loose. because these being torqued down is real important. And when I remove something like that, I don't like to take all the pressure off one. I like to loosen them all, then go back and finish remove them. Don't lose these washers. They're kind of a special washer. You see how thick they are. Now, one thing I wanna warn you of when you get to this point is you may not be watching this video to tear everything apart. If you're just gonna end up pulling the head, you wanna make sure that all this dirt and junk doesn't fall down inside the engine. Now, for the purpose of this video, we're gonna be going through the whole thing, so I'm not as concerned about that because we're gonna be cleaning everything as we take it apart and then reassembly with a completely nicely clean, blasted um, case and all that. So, depending on what you're doing, just make sure you take note of what you need to be watching out for. If this has been on here a long time, it can be really hard to get it off. Just kind of work your way around with the rubber mallet. Try not to damage it. But if it's been on there a long time, it can be a beast to get these off. Here we go. We have our cylinder head cover off. Now with this off, you're going to be able to get a good look inside here. What we're looking at here is obviously you got your valves here. Got your intake valve and your exhaust valve. And... The cam sat down in this little cradle, and you can see there's a bushing here. We're gonna to have to inspect all this stuff as we continue on. But before we get into this part, which will be in the next video of actually taking the head off and breaking down the valves and all that stuff, we're gonna go back to the cylinder head cover. Now that the cylinder head cover is off and on the table, we're gonna remove the decompression lever. I'm just gonna use a 10 millimeter socket. It's just a, like a retaining bolt here. 
This little assembly can slide right out. Don't lose any of those parts. Now the inspection holes for setting the valve clearances, I had already broken loose when the engine was on the bench before the video started. So I'm just gonna spin these off. You might have to grab a socket to get yours off. Little rubber gaskets there, almost like an O-ring. Okay, so it's completely torn down except for the rockers. Let's get these rockers out of there, the rocker arms out, and then we can inspect both of them. What holds the rocker arms in place is there are two shafts that go through here. This plate blocks off the shaft so they can't work their way out. So it's got a Phillips uh, screw in there. We're gonna use the ratchet to try to break that loose. And look, I'm seeing that it's gonna try to distort this. So what I'm gonna do is get an impact screwdriver and I'm gonna hit this, try to break it free. I'm gonna apply a little bit of heat to the aluminum casting. I don't want to overheat anything. Just to expand that a little bit. Now I'm going to use the impact. And we got her. The last thing you want to do is break something off in here. Then you're going to need, you probably would end up needing a whole new cylinder head cover at that point. Okay, so that's out. As I pull these out, I made little labels for myself just to make it easier to remember intake and exhaust. Not that it's impossible to figure out but I like to make things real easy. We're going to be coming back to these shortly because we're going to need to inspect them. Before we do that, I'd like to clean up and inspect the cover. So the first step to cleaning this stuff is to run it. I just have a parts wash tank here with a water soluble cleaner. It's like purple power or a simple green you could use. Just kind of brushing off the big stuff. Then we're gonna drop it in the ultrasonic cleaner. And now we're gonna drop her in the ultrasonic cleaner and let it run for probably 40 minutes. While the cylinder head cover is cleaning, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna inspect the rocker arms themselves and the rocker shafts. So what we're concerned with is the diameter of this hole here. And we're gonna to have to measure this very, very accurately because Honda only gives us a range, brand new, of 472 thousandths and four tenths, up to 473 thousandths. So there's only six tenths of a thousandths clearance allowed inside this hole for new. Just like we mentioned in the last video, you cannot measure this accurately with any kind of a digital caliper or a dial caliper. You need to use either a hole gauge and a micrometer, a dial bore gauge, or you can use gauge pins, which I'm gonna show you gauge pins and the hole gauge. My dial bore gauge set does not go down this small, so I can't use a dial bore gauge in this instance. 
So I'm gonna check it with my hole gauge. And these have a definite feel to them. What I'm getting for a reading is 473 thousandths. The range given by Honda, like we just mentioned, is 472 thousandths and four tenths up to 473 thousandths. So this is at the upper end of a standard new tolerance. The wear limit is up to 474 thousandths. So we are one thousandths under the wear limit, which is very good. Now, any kind of a quality machine shop is also gonna have what they call gauge pin sets. If you're not familiar with gauge pins, each one of these pins is growing larger in diameter by one thousandths increments. So we can check the hole and use these gauge pins as like a, a go gauge and a no go gauge. So I'm gonna select the 472 thousandths pin because we know that brand new, this could have had a diameter of 472 thousandths and four tenths. So this should be able to pass right through. And it does, 472. The 473 thousandths pin, I can get it to start, but it's getting tight in the center. I cannot pass the 473 thousandths gauge pin through the diameter, which means that this is gonna pass our inspection test because we could go up to a 474 thousandths pin before we reach the wear limit and the 473 thousandths does not quite pass through. This is a good rocker arm. Now we're gonna go ahead and check the rocker shaft itself. Again, you're gonna need a micrometer because your dial caliper is not gonna be accurate enough. A new rocker shaft, according to Honda, is 471 thousandths and five tenths up to 472 thousandths and two tenths with a wear limit of 470 thousandths. So on a brand new one, You've only got seven tenths of a thousandths as your variation low to high. Let's check it and we're gonna check the rocker shaft at several different points and we're gonna rotate it 90 degrees just to see if anything's out of round. So right now I'm reading 471 and five tenths. 471 and five tenths. 471 and five tenths. 471 and 5 tenths. Again, I'm repeating this reading everywhere that I check. So right now, this is actually at the low limit of a brand new one. So it's perfectly fine. We have one and a half thousandths of material before we get down to the wear limit. Let's go ahead and check the exhaust side. On the exhaust side, we have a little more wear. I'm getting 473 thousandths and a few tenths. Looks like 473 and two. Let's check it with the gauge pins. So 472 easily slides through. Let's check 473 on the intake side. We weren't able to get 473 to go, only to start. And we can get 473 all the way through on the exhaust side. Now 474 is what we're worried about. That's the wear limit. And I can't get 474 to start from either end. So this one is also going to pass. Check the rocker shaft on the exhaust side. Remember our limit is 470. Right now I'm getting 471 and two tenths. And that's what I'm getting all the way around, just over 471. So again, the shaft is good. The final thing to check on the rocker and shaft are the clearances. Honda gives us a limit of rocker arm shaft, rocker arm to shaft clearance. The service limit is three thousandths. They only really want two tenths up to 1.6 thousandths or 16 tenths. Let's see what we have. 
On the intake, the rocker came in at 473 thousandths, so minus the diameter of the shaft, which is 471 and a half thousandths. We have 0 0.0015, or one and a half thousandths. That puts us within the standard limit. The exhaust side had a little bit more wear. It started off with the rocker at 473 thousandths and two tenths, minus the shaft diameter, 471 thousandths and two tenths, leaves us with a solid two thousandths of clearance. This is outside the limit of standard tolerance, which is 16 tenths, but it places us within the service limit of 3,000. So we can use both the intake and rocker shaft assemblies. This is why it's important, even if your rocker and your shaft both fall within the allow allowance, you've got to make sure that the clearance is still okay and that the clearance falls within the allowance. Don't skip any of these steps. The head cover is out of the ultrasonic cleaner. Came out pretty nice. And what we're looking for here is any major cracks or defects. There are some imperfections in the aluminum down in there. That is pretty typical when it's heated and cooled over and over again. That's not a problem. I'm not too worried about that. What we'd be looking for is anything major, major cracks that actually go through the casting. And I'm not seeing that. I have tested it on the Granite table, this is a precision surface, and I'm not getting any rocking corner to corner, so it's relatively flat. I don't, I did set it on a 4,000 grit um, piece of sandpaper and just moved it back and forth a couple of times just to clean up, see where it was touching. I don't want to remove too much material here, so we're gonna leave this. I'm gonna call this good. And that concludes this uh, second video in the series on tearing down, inspecting, and rebuilding the Honda ATC 200 engine. The next one we'll be doing, we'll be taking the cylinder head off, and we're going to break down the valves, and we're going to check the guides with the gauge pins and with the hole gauge, and we're going to see if those need to be uh, replaced. And then we'll move our way down, continuing our way down inside, taking the cylinder off, checking the rod, all that. So stay tuned. Hope you're enjoying this series. Show me in the, uh, in the comments what you think. And if there's anything else you'd like me to cover while we're doing this, just leave a comment. Thanks again. Please remember to subscribe and share these with your friends.